back to Once Upon a Game. I am Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to be doing a, a run through of Core Space, the sci fi uh, miniatures game. Uh, we're going to be running the second mission of the campaign. Uh, we're going to do it solo. Um, not going to explain too much uh, other than just kind of introduce you to, in general, what's going on. Um, in this mission, this I put the green ring on her. Kaori is a, normally a civilian. She's a hacker in this one. And there are three uh, terminals. One of which she's using to send some uh, secret information to the bad guys. And so we've got to interrogate her to find out which is the correct terminal and uh, destroy that terminal. And we can do this in one of two ways. We can either uh, come up adjacent to her uh, and um, persuade her with a persuasion roll, or we can take her out, come in contact with her body, and, uh, and then find out where it is. And we'll do that by basically flipping over all the tokens at that time and determine which one is the uh, seven value token. Uh, we have to take that and then we have to destroy the terminal to get back to our ship, which is here. Of course, throughout all this, the Purge are still on their way. So we will have to be battling them. We'll have to be battling other civilians. So you'd think it would be easy to just approach her. However, if we get in short range of her and in line of sight, then she will stop behaving as a random civilian and she will start taking actions based on the flowchart uh, for all the AI. So that is going to prove to be kind of uh, difficult because we'll need to be able to get to her and uh, to close on her and then persuade her with our two actions. So I uh, might have to see about surrounding her. Uh, my crew is again uh, continuing on is uh, Jace and Lars. This is Jace, the captain. This is Lars. He's a technician, and uh, so there. The ship is docked here. This is our, our loading bay here. Uh, I've left one uh, piece of uh, equipment in the ship. You cannot come to and from the ship during the game, so I'm just going to leave that behind because I don't want to lose it. But at the same time, I want to leave some slots free for finding something better, maybe, or some salvage, or the technology that we have to the hacker data so we will start by leaving the ship um, these are the spawn points that will randomly determine where purge characters come in and they're set up all around the board with emphasis here four and five and one and two in this kind of central hallway area uh, the characters are all re uh, restocked. They have full ammo. They have their skill points left. They have their full health. Um, like I said, they've each got a ranged weapon and uh, armor and a health pack. So I wanted to leave them free to, to find stuff because salvage is part of the game. Uh, here's the civilian uh, stat boards that we need as well as the purge boards and all the purge characters waiting to come into play. That bag is all the items that we will search. If we do general searches, the chests are all actually loaded with um, with counters, so they're preloaded. So you have to get adjacent to one and search it. Um, and then we've got our event deck, which we'll, we will use to start the game. So the hostility tracker here is set to start at three, and how this works is at the beginning of each turn, we'll add a peg to the hostility tracker and it changes through these different stages and then the event cards will reference what the current state of the board is and different things will happen. Um, the other increase to that is the first shot that traders may fire during the game will add a peg to that tracker as well. And one cool thing is that you can tell that uh, you did it because you remove your ammo token and you put it in the next slot. And if the last slot is yellow or tan, you know that you've already done that for the round. So it's kind of a good way to visually remember that you've done it. 
So we have two other, uh, two other civilians here in the field of play, and they will act when it's their turn. So the turn order is uh, the event phase, and then the uh, traders phase, then the purge phase, and then the civilians phase, and then we uh, evaluate, which basically means have we won, and then we'll reset some tokens. So we are going to start with the event phase. So we've added the one peg, we're still in relaxed mode. So I'm going to, the studio is set up very weird for this one. So I've got a bad feeling about this nerves. A massive screeching noise echoes through the air, raise the hostility by one. And add a peg, which means we're already now in guarded state to start our round. Okay, so now we are at the, uh, the uh, trader's phase, and they can take, usually it's two actions um, as they advance. Um, they can, my guys can each take two actions right now, but as they advance, um, you'll see Jace has a uh, potential uh, other action that he can get uh, when he levels up, so that'll be cool. He'll get three actions in a turn. Should be really helpful here because then I could close on her and also get her. So you can choose the order that your traders activate. If you're playing multiplayer, then each the initiative phase would uh, alternate. The first player would move move first or play a trader first, and then would alternate between uh, between players. But in solo, it is just us. First move into the game has to be a move. You're not considered in the board until you move. And you do that with this uh, movement ruler. And that tells you one move. If you do two moves in a row, you can do eight straight. You can, you can bend and turn however you need to. You don't have to move in a straight line. So you can like, come here and then go over there or whatever. So uh, you have choices. So we know we need to talk to her. And also short range is that far from her so we can get close and not be seen but she could still actually shoot at us or move away from us so i think uh, i'm gonna have jace just move out of the ship and he is going to take one move it's about there you don't have to be super precise with this you know you're just kind of eyeballing it and then he's going to take a second move and that'll get him through the door into here. Now, you also have what is called, um, I call them free actions, but they actually have a real name. And I will tell you what that is, effortless actions. And they are very basic. If you're in base contact with an item um, that's been dropped, you can pick it up for free. If you have, um, if you have, um, like the health pack here, the stem pack. You can use it, it's got the little check mark on it. It means you can use that for free without taking one of your actions. So he's taken two actions. He took one move and another move. And so I'm just gonna have him take an effortless action to move another inch, just ignoring that civilian for now because keeping, keeping our eyes on the prize here. Okay, so then what we do for good measure is take a activation token and we'll put it on Jace to show that he has taken his move. And we will go to Lars. And what will Lars do? Lars, I think, is going to try to come around on the other side of her. And he can do that. There is a door here, and there is a room and a door there. So I think he's going to kind of move in that general direction. And we'll let him do that. So he too, to start out, so we're just going to have him go ahead and move his, his full two moves at eight. So he's right there, and then he'll use his effortless action to move through the door. So that is where he's ended up, right there. Okay, so that is the end of the trader turn. So we are now going to go into the purge turn. And the first thing is their arrival. And since we did jump very quickly into guarded mode, 
we are going to roll for harvesters and we roll the black die to see how many of them show up and there can be zero so we have zero we can have one and there's a chance of two being on here and then we're also going to roll the chance die to tell us where they end up so we're going to roll we get one harvester and he is on spot four. So the harvesters are over here. And he's gonna come in. He comes in on the board right at four. So he's gonna be right there. And the harvesters um, do not have any ranged weapons. The harvesters have to be in base contact. However, and they can only make one move, so they can only move four inches. However, if they do come in base contact on their turn, they get a free strike. So they will close in. So their target selection criteria is uh, the first non-purge character in sight. A character is any miniature on the board. Um, so they may choose the civilians, they may choose you. So for this, for this guy here that just came on board, the only one he can see is the civilian. So the the target decision is made at the start of their activation and it will not change during. So for example, if he were to move, like if he were here and to move, he would not change to her because he could see her now. He would start there and the next turn he would deal with whoever was in the area. So he is just going to move four and you, the, there are grids on the, on the mat. So you can kind of roughly move them by that. But I'm all fastidious. So I'm going to move it straight ahead. He is just moving forward and just straight ahead toward that civilian. And that is it for the purge turn. It's kind of unusual that we have a purge out. Usually we get a, we get a couple to start with. So we're now in the civilian phase. And how this works is you're gonna do the civilians in whatever order you want, your choice, and then they act based on the decision die. And there are four different, or six different actions that can happen. And go over them real quick. First is a move. Okay. The second is an attack. And then they move. So they're attacking out of fear, right? Especially now with this uh, purge in the way. They'll attack and then they'll run away twice. And then third is they will try to hide. And fourth, they didn't put these in regular die layout so fourth is they will try to join you and they will try to join your crew if they're in certain criteria nearby and fifth is they will try to trade with the nearest nearest uh, trader and finally sixth and this is interesting a lot of these if, if they can't like if they don't have a target to attack they'll just move but the sixth one is if a live one which is the meanest bad guy in the base game is potentially available and what that means is when you're in the cover me step they become available okay so if we're in the cover me step and we roll that then that civilian whoever rolled it becomes a live one in other words they were in disguise the other thing in this here is they have arrows right and they're all pointing right or left However, when you roll the die, if it's cocked this way, they're going to move in that direction relative to the die roll. So it kind of gives you a random direction as well. So we will start the uh, trader phase. I mean, excuse me, the civilian phase here. We'll start with this guy here. And his name is, uh, this is Butler. And he is a human. And he's going to roll. All right, so he gets a four. He's going to try to join someone who's in range well our guy is in range so let's review that because i've never gotten that when it was an option before so we will go to all right join if there are any traders within short range and line of sight the civilian will join the crew belonging to the closest of these traders so we will have a third uh, character that we can that we can play with here so Butler has now joined our crew, so I'm going to take him from the civilian populace and put him now with, uh, with my boards. Okay, 
So, well, let's do it officially here. He has moved adjacent. So he's we're engaged, and he is now one of he's now part of my crew. So he will activate in the next trader phase. So Kaori, our star of the hour, I'm gonna roll. So she gets a hide in that direction. All right, so she's gonna try to find cover via the shortest route possible. So she technically doesn't know he's there, but we're gonna pretend she does. So she's gonna actually just kind of duck into, come through this door into this room and get him full cover. And now a Ganik, who is a Ganik, I believe. And he is going to, he's going to try to trade. No, he's going to try to join, but there is nobody in range for him. So he's just going to do a move in the direction of the arrow. So he can move four inches. So his four inches are going to be just over here to the edge, which hopefully some bad guys don't come in on spot number three. All right. So that is now our civilian phase. And that is the state of the board. So we are going to assess. I should have put a, should have put a spent token on this guy. I'm going to go ahead and bring these over to be a good boy. We'll put them in play and then leave one for Butler there. And then we will remove them because it's part of the clean out phase. All right. And we're going to go into turn two. All right. We're starting turn two now. Uh, so we advance the tracker here, still in guarded state. And we're going to draw a card, an event card. And this one says, okay, relax to guarded. We're out for stroll, scatter all unengaged civilians. So scatter is an interesting concept. We are going to roll the dot for each civilian and they will move in the direction the arrow is pointing the number of inches that rolls up, so one to six inches. He is no longer a civilian, he's part of my crew. So these two are gonna scatter. So we will roll for Ganeek first. We'll just start left to right. All right, and Ganeek is gonna scatter four inches straight in, okay? So we can just do it by the so one, two, three, four. All right, and then for Kaori, she is going to scatter two inches diagonal, and she cannot, so you kind of just move her as best you can, so she's just going to kind of slide along the wall in this chest, and so she'll be, she'll be right there and in good shape. So that was, that was what we did based on our event. So we look at Butler here. Butler gets two actions. He has no armor. He's, he rolls one die for range shot and one die for uh, close combat. And so we are good to go. He gets two actions. So we just treat him like another crew. So that might be helpful because it will help us to get around um, and maybe surround her, but she's already starting to move away. So I'm going to send him, I'm going to try to send him through this door here into this room to block her, block her off. I'm going to keep him moving, Lars, and keep Jace moving as well. Um, but they may have to, they're going to have to deal with this guy too. So we want to do that as well. So I'm going to start with Butler. And he's just going to do two moves at eight inches. And then he'll go ahead and take a effortless action to go there. So he is activated. And Jace is going to first off come through to here. Now he has, I don't know if you can see it or not, he has a clear shot, get close here, 
He has a clear shot through that window at Kaori. And if I wanted to, I could just take, I could try to take her out. She has no arm. She has one armor, I believe. Uh, she does have one armor. But I kind of told myself before I started that I'd be a good guy and only shoot if they shot us first. So I believe that is what I'm going to do. So we're going to try and uh, engage her. And hopefully she's not going to shoot us. So he's going to move another four. One, two, three, four. And then take an effortless action to move closer. And he's... So he's ready in case that guy comes around because he can only move, that harvester can only move five or four. So he, he'll come into range, but he won't be able to get to him. Jace has taken his turn and now Lars is gonna take his turn. And I think for Lars, we are going to, so what's our range here? He would be in medium range. If he moves one, he would be in medium range. So I think he's gonna do that. He's gonna go ahead and move up, uh, move first. And he's going to move four. And now he has a line of sight, unobstructed, no cover, line of sight at that harvester. And he is in medium range. Anything longer than the ruler is short range. That means long range. So how combat works is, that's his weapon right there, his long range weapon. And it's got the numbers two, two, and nothing. And what that means is he can fire two, he rolls two dice at short range, two dice at medium range, and no dice, he can't shoot long range. Jace's weapon is three, two, and zero. So he gets three dice at short range, which is really nice. So, uh, sorry about that noise there. So, there are no armor rolls. The only thing you get is, uh, there's no defense rolls. You just attack, uh, armor and cover, reduce the number of hits. So he is in no cover, so he gets no bonus, but his card says that he gets one armor. So Jace is gonna attack with two dice. You always roll the blue. The blue has two hits plus, so you can always maybe even get a hit. And then this has is less powerful. So when you the first die is always gonna be the blue die, and then additional die are gonna be red die. So he is going to attack with two dice. And we're hoping for two hits because we just need to score one hit past his armor. So he's got one armor. All right, we rolled and we got one hit. Minus armor is zero hits. Now this, if these had both come up, exclamation, then his weapon would have been damaged, would have jammed, and would have been needed to uh, be, that, have that fixed. But he only got one hit and nothing. So that was also our first shot of the round. So we take the ammo peg and we've now increased our hostility meter to the top of the guarded section which means we are now uh, going to in the next when we start the next turn we're going to go into watch your back all right so but we're still in guarded so now uh large is gone he took his two actions well you know what he can he did he is going to take his effortless action and move an inch to try to be just a little bit further away and in cover so his turn is now done. Uh, other actions they could be doing besides moving and shooting would be, if you're in a room, you're not engaged with an enemy, you can search, do a general search of the room. If you come in contact with one of these chests, you can use one of your actions to search the chest. Um, we cannot do anything with the terminals until we find out which one is the right one, then we can destroy it. We can attack them before that. Um, there are some advanced actions in the advanced rule book, but we're not using those. Um, so anyway, this was a quick overview of uh, uh, if you're in base contact, you can we can try to persuade Kaori. You can try to persuade a civilian to join your crew, which in this case we don't need to because he's already joined us. Um, and there's a plus to having someone join your crew is at the end you can hire them for um, to be a permanent part of your crew. So. All right, so now we're in the purge phase. So again, we're gonna roll, and we start on one die. One die for the harvesters. And we'll roll that, Take our combat dice away, and roll, oh, two harvesters have come in on two. And two is down here, so now they've got us surrounded. So I still have some harvesters available. 
So I'm going to grab two. Now this works is you put one on and then you put the other one on as close as you can. Which I'll just put them here on the one slot as close as you can. So they're basically touching each other. So they are engaged with each other, which would matter if one was in front of the other one. But in this case, they're not blocking each other. Now they all activate. So activation is uh, by class. Right now we only have harvesters on the board. So the harvesters will act in any order that we choose. So again, the first priority is the closest in line of sight. So for this harvester that was there before, the only one in line of sight is going to be Lars. Because he's just peeking out from behind the corner. So we are going to have him move four inches toward Lars. So he's going to get just inside the room, about right there. And now these two over here, they obviously can see Jace. And they're just going to move four inches toward him. So we will just put that down. We'll just go ahead and move them by the grid. And so one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So they are there. Now, when this escalates to the next stage, watch your, step, watch your back. Then we're going to start bringing in the Devastators. And the Devastators can take ranged combat actions. So... Got some trouble going on now here. So we're trying to deal with capturing her or getting the information from her, but now we got these bad guys in the way. So that is that. Now we will move the civilians. Uh, we will start with Ganik. See what he does. Now they're free, even though he can see line of sight. And just trust me on that, he's seeing through the window. Uh, as long as they don't start their activation within four inches. Um, of a uh, purge character. Uh, they will not alter what they do, they'll just, they'll just randomly, because they may run right into them and try to attack them. And their preference is to attack purge, but they can attack you as well, so. Let's hope that doesn't happen. So Ganik uh, does not need that, he just needs this. And Ganik is going to, Ganik wants to trade with somebody uh, in line of sight. So let's see, he, is, he does have Jace in line of sight. So let's see how that works. So what will happen is, doo -doo -doo, he will, let's see, trade. So he makes a move toward the nearest trader in line of sight, not engaged with an enemy. So he's going to move toward Jace because he sees him there. And if they move into contact, they're going to try to get to me. If he gets to me, they will offer him a trade, and we will draw a random equipment token for the pouch, or and we can keep it, or we can uh, uh, swap it. Okay? Do, 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 do. So you can trade an item, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have any items except for a health pack, but maybe what he offers me is really good, so we'll see. So we're going to take... Well, first of all, hold on, let's jumping out of ourselves. Let's let him get to me first. So we put this down. He, he can, he can, you know what? I don't think he can get to me. He can get pretty much to the door. So I was a little premature there. He's just going to move to the door. He can't actually get to where he could offer me a trade. So he saw me, he started moving. He said, oh, okay, maybe next time. So that's where he is. So that's where he is, right there. And now it's Kaori's turn. And what is she gonna do? Uh, you know what? I think I messed up. I think I'm in close range and I am in line of sight of Kaori. So I have already messed things up. Can she see him? Yes, she can. So she is going to now switch to, yeah, I'm in short range. So she's gonna switch now to uh, using her actions and the uh, flowchart, just like uh, just like we do. So, or just like the, excuse me, just like the purge do. So she will pick a target, and her target um, can be is is again 
preferably a purge, but um, if not, could be a traitor. So she cannot see the purge. She is totally blocked, right? So she is not going to, and line of sight is drawn from the center of the shooter to any part of the base. And she has nothing because she's just totally blocked by a wall. So, but she can see me. And she is in base contact with this trunk, so this does not impede her. She's going to be able to fire at Jace. I said me, but my character. So, looking at her stat card right here, she does a ranged with a two. Two dice. And I am not in cover. And so, uh, you know what? I am I am in cover. Sorry. I'm, in a, I'm through a window. I'm not through the door. So I'm going to get one cover. Plus I have my one armor. So I get two off of the attack but she can still hit me with three so let's see what she does so Kiori is going to attack she gets two actions so she can attack twice so she rolled nothing so that's a good first attack and she's not a traitor so it doesn't increase we don't increase uh if we had uh not already done that we would not increase the uh hostility meter so she's going to take her second attack. And she got two. Oh, got lucky there. She got the two, but she only got two total. And minus one for armor, minus one for cover. And Jace is not hit. But now he's a little annoyed because she's not shot at him. All right. So she has gone. So that's the second civilian to go. And she now will act. That doesn't change the rest of the game. Uh, until she's dealt with now she is going to act completely as a uh, as a uh, NPC that's not a civilian so she's gone she's gone rogue on us so we may have to we may have to shoot her and avoid these uh, purge at the same time so that is two rounds all right so we're about to kick off round three uh, Jace here has a uh, line of sight on not only a harvester, but also on uh, Kaori here, who just shot at him twice. So I've got a decision to make if I want to try to lay it on her or uh, try to get in range. You know what? I think I have a chance. Maybe I can do a one and then get in there. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. But first things first, we have to increase our hostility meter. All right, so we are now firmly in the watch your backstage. So the threat's going to increase really quickly now, and we're going to draw the event card. All right, so we're still in watch your back. Place two harvesters at the nearest entry point to a trader. In addition, all harvesters gain an extra action this round. That is not good news. So I'm going to put that over here by the... So what we do is, first of all, I've got to place two harvesters. Which are the low guys. Entry point nearest to trader. Technically, he's a trader now. But unfortunately, we are right here, and Lars is going to be surrounded. So they're both going to go there. And now the rule is all harvesters are going to get an extra action this turn. So what's bad about that is that if any harvesters get added, and right now five are on the board, that's all there are in this base set, which is fine, that's more than enough. But if any harvesters get added, like if we take them out and they get re-added, they still get the extra action too. So how you mark that is next to each of the harvesters. Just put a little reminder, red for bad, and a, and a uh, blue is for something good to remind you. All right. So there's that. Not good news. But the event phase is done, and so now we can maybe take care of things. Bad news is our ship is way over here, and we are way over here. So, oh, I really want to be the nice guy. Let's see 
if we can be the nice guy. All right, I can take a one and get right to the door. You know what, I can get in contact with her. I, can, I think I can do it. I'm gonna, remember it's all eyeballing. So the one gets me right here to the door. Oh, you know what, I can't run through him. Oh, he's blocking the door. So, there are rules that you can like dive through windows and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do that because then you run a risk of damaging yourself. So there are options where you can knock back a character if you're in base contact with them, um, uh, but then that's an action as well. So, not, not in good shape here. Don't want to shoot her. It just goes against my nature to just, just gun her down, although she did shoot at me. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just turn around and take a, take care of these two guys. Let's see, they're only going to close to four. Oh, he gets an extra action. So the extra action, they would be able to move eight inches, come in base contact with me, and hurt me. So, hurt Jace. Keep saying me. So, let's see what we can do here see what our options are so I think we're gonna shoot so he is at medium range obviously so he's not short so he's gonna shoot at the first one they have no cover at all they have one armor and he attacks with two dice he's gonna do his two dice attack and he needs two hits and he got two hits so this one is blink gone that'd be cool to like print some uh, tokens that had like disintegrated little purge guys to put on the board just to decorate. So he comes off and he's gonna use, and the, we have to put Jace fired. So Jace will put our first ammo token on the threat tracker, hostility tracker. And then he's gonna shoot again. So he does have to spend the ammo though. So you do have to get rid of the ammo. All right, so I need two hits. We got no hits, so that. Now there is, he does have options with regards to some skills, and we'll get into those later. Because you kind of want to conserve them, but he could, uh, he could do some skill. Um, some skills allow him, would allow him to fire again, but uh, I don't think we're going to do that right this second. I think we're going to take more action. So. He is going to move. He's going to use his effortless action to move back an inch and hope that puts him out of range. So Jace has taken his action. Butler does not have a persuade skill. He could roll one die and try to persuade her, but you got to get two hits. Uh, you got to get three hits to persuade her. She has a two resistance to persuasion. So um, Jace is really the one to do it because he, he can roll three skill dice to persuade her and has a better chance of getting the three hits because she has a two resistance. Just need to get one hit after the resistance. All right, Lars is going to, he is in a bad way. He is really, really in a bad way here. He has a skill at level two right there that I believe He can shut down a per with level one. He can shut down a purge character rank one or two within medium range and remove it from play. Or if he uses skill level two, which is what he has, he can shut down up to two purge characters rank one or two only within medium range and remove them from play. So skills you can take whenever you want. In addition to your two actions, in addition to your effortless action. Um, so he has two skill points, which he can use. So he could use a level one skill twice. He could use a level two skill once. Uh, you see Chase has three skill points available to him. So the cool thing is I could get rid of those two guys right there as a freebie. And I think this is the time to do it because he's about to get surrounded. He is surrounded. He's about to get like bombarded. So 
he's going to use that. He's going to go ahead and use both skill points. Get those out. You can also use your skill points to take a second effortless action, or third even, in a turn. But you have to pay one skill point per. Okay, so he's going to use that, and he's going to shut down these two, which means they're immediately out of the game. Because they would have closed right in on him. So he's fine there. Now he's going to take a shot at that guy. See if he can take care of him. And so he attacks with two. No cover. And at medium range. So he needs three, uh, two hits. And bingo, three hits. Took him out as well. Good shooting, Lars. Lars and the real gun. So now he has another action. And that action is going to be, he is going to move. And... <clears throat> so he's going to move to here and then use his effortless to move up here and kind of get in cover of this wall and see what that gets him. Okay, Looking good there. All right, so that was Lars, took his action. All right, and now Butler is going to take his. He gets two. He's going to uh, move in here, just through the door, and then move into base contact with her. So that makes her engaged. So she will now have to, she will not be able to, uh, since they're engaged, base to base contact, she will not be able to range fire. She will have to uh, attack him with her close combat, which is only a one, which is good. Uh, so less chance of hitting, although uh, Butler has no armor and no cover, because cover doesn't apply in this. So she just gets one die, she may hit him and take him out. But if she tries to move, uh, he gets an attack of opportunity. So he has done his two actions. And we are now on to the purge phase. Okay, so looking now at our tracker, we are going to roll for the harvesters, and then we're going to roll for the devastators in the same fashion that we did before. So any harvesters that come out are going to get that second action this turn. So this is for harvesters. Hopefully we'll get none. But we got one on five so one of those harvesters is going to come back he's going to be on five and it's down here and we'll give him his icon now the devastators are already going to get they already get two actions but the harvesters only get one normally but this guy's going to get two all right so now we got to roll forward the devastators normally i don't bump into this terrain all that much but juggling two cameras and dice and a microphone. A lot of fun. So we got none. Whew. That's good. So the Devastators do not come out. Sounds like a rock band from the 80s. The Devastators. Okay, so now they activate. So we only have two on the board, but they get two movement. So again, first target in line of sight for him clearly is going to be Jace. It, I should say, because it is a robot. It's not a him. Uh, so he's going to move two. Let's see if eight gets him in contact with me, and it does not. So he's going to move right there. So he does not get in base contact, so he does not get an attack. Now, this one cannot see anybody. I do not think. Oh, let's see. He can definitely see. He can see Jace. He's going through this open door and this big door so he can I mean Lars so he's gonna move double toward Lars but again I don't think he's gonna be able to to get to him let's see so he's gonna move one which is gonna put him right here it right here and then he'll move it will move Ooh. Where do you want to get technical, I guess? It looks like it's just a miss. Him 
Lars moving back a little bit managed to avoid also being in base contact with that harvester. Very good news. Very, very good news. So, on to the civilian phase. And we are going to... Um, I guess we'll go ahead and start with her, uh, Kaori, because I know she's going to fight him. So, the NPC flowchart will tell you what they are to do. And is the target engaged? Yes, the NPC will make a close assault action against the target. So this will be her first action is to do a close assault. She rolls one die, he has no armor. So she's rolling this one here. All she needs is one hit and then he's out of the game. So it's probably stupid of me to put him in harm's way. One hit, no, no defense. So he, uh, Butler, is out of the game. Okay, so now she decides her next action. Her next action is going to be, uh, she picks a new target, and, uh, well, let me, let me check on that. So for Purge, they do not reassess their target. So, and it says that they do it in the same, like, Purge. So I'm going to say that she's not going to take any action because she already picked her target, and now her target's not there. I would need a rules clarification on that, but based on how it's worded, uh, that seems to be how it's supposed to be played, which is bad because I would have liked her to have attacked that, uh, that purge character right there, but she did not. So that, uh, now we have, um, uh, Ganik, and he's going to move. Now he is starting out in close range, short range of that purge. So he has a specific action. Um, if they start their activation within four inches of the purge, any movement they make, if any, must first be directly away from the purge and only once they're out of range. So that's only if they get a move action. So we still roll for him. So we will roll for Ganeet to see what he does. But he also cannot get past me. <laughs> but he can do a ranged attack if it comes up as attack. So let's see. And he has, he's going to uh, attempt to get in base contact with me and trade. And I'm up against that. And he cannot do that. So he will then move, uh, make a move action in the direction indicated, which he cannot do. He cannot get past me. Uh, but however, excuse me, because he does have to take a move action, the first thing he's going to do is move away until he is four inches away from the... Uh, from the purge, and so he's gonna move there first, and that gives him it's still about the same. So he did do a he did do a move action to move away from the purge. That is where we are. Um, we're dancing here with these two purge characters, and the civilians are hanging out, and Butler is uh, resting in peace. So get this off the board, and the activity markers off the board. The game is not over and that is going to be it for this video um come back and we'll see how it plays out thanks for watching god bless you bye bye oh.